A new free content update just dropped for Lords of the Fallen and this includes six more enemy spells and three new throwables that you can earn right now. And I'm gonna show you the fastest way to get them and what they look like in action. Three weeks ago, the developers released their first free spell pack, making six of the enemy spells available to players for free. If you didn't catch my video on it, I'll leave a link in the description. And now they've brought more spells and throwables to the game for part one of a two part update. Part one, which is live right now, also includes some boss weapons getting some new special abilities, and we now have the ability to farm faction shrine currencies, like the plucked eyeballs, pilfered coins, and severed hands, from elite enemies that are part of each faction. So you no longer have to play PvP for those shrine specific armor sets and shaders. Part two, which releases next week, adds three new armor set quest lines, the ability to modify your character's current appearance, new grievous strikes, and more. So make sure to subscribe to the channel and stay tuned for videos on those. So we'll start with the six spells that were just added, two Radiant, two Inferno, and two Umbral. These are RNG drops from specific enemies, so it basically means you'll need to keep farming them until you get the item. By the way, all of these spells are permanent and they're not required for the trophy slash achievement that requires you to collect all of the spells in the game. Up first is the Radiant spell called Smiting Shield. For this I'd recommend traveling to the Vestige of Ferrers the Charred because we're looking for the Pure Blade Knight enemy, and there just so happens to be two of them nearby. Once you drop down off the cliff and head through the gate, you'll find the first one immediately. You'll know if it's the right enemy because they'll empower their shield with Radiant Energy. Once you kill him, he takes a second to drop his loot, so just keep your eyes peeled. If you continue up these stairs and along this pathway, you'll eventually find a second Pure Blade Knight. Once you defeat him, at this point you can either choose to run back to the Vestige we started at by making this jump over the bridge and resting at the Vestige, or you can continue past the second Pure Blade Knight, and if you follow the path that I'm taking in the video, you'll find a flower bed where you can plant a Vestige seedling. This lets you just respawn here, quickly jump down, kill the Pure Blades, and then go back without having to make any risky bridge jumps. After resetting at your seedling, just take a left and head outside where you can then repeat the process of killing these two guys and returning to your seedling to reset them. Here's what the Smiting Shield spell looks like in action. Next up is the second Radiant spell called Lambent Faint. You can get this one by starting at the Vestige of Rosamund and heading through the gate towards the Sin Piercer enemy. They're the one with a bow who's usually accompanied by a dog. You could just run up to this first one, kill it, and then make your way back down to the Vestige to rest, or you could continue to find two more Sin Piercers, letting you farm three in one run. This is the method that I chose to use, but it's entirely up to you and how you want to farm this. Also, the drops are RNG like I mentioned, so it may take a while to get some of these. It took me around six hours of farming to get all of the nine new items, but I'm pretty sure I was just very unlucky because I've seen people get multiple of these on their first kill. Eventually, you will get it to drop though, and here's what it looks like in action. Next, we're going to hunt down the Inferno spells, so start from the Vestige of Doln, and we're looking for these guys, the Seared Souls. They're the very slow, weak enemies that are constantly on fire, and they should be a few feet away from this Vestige. If you want, you can even walk a little bit further to find two more of them before you head back and reset. It's definitely not the only place you can find these guys, but it's the closest one to an ancient Vestige that I've found. If luck is on your side, they'll drop the Seared Soul spell, so let's check out what it looks like.
For the second Inferno spell, you can start again from the Vestige of Doln, and this time we're going to run past the Seared Soul enemies, past the Proselyte enemy, jump down near the tree, and run past the Ruiner enemy to get to the flower bed where we can place a Vestige Seedling. To get the Incinerating Blast spell, we need to farm the Ruiner boss. There's a super short and easy loop you can do here, starting from the Vestige Seedling. All you have to do is jump out of this broken house from where the Seedling is, kill the Ruiner boss, run back up the ramp, and then just rest at the Seedling. There's even a few Seared Souls here if you want to farm them as well for the previous spell. When you get this one to finally drop, this is what it looks like. The next thing on our list is the two Umbral spells. The first one is Puncturing Hail, and for this you'll want to start at the Vestige of Svornil. Turn around from the Vestige and head straight through the gate. Keep walking and eventually you'll run into a Grief-bound enemy, the one that can summon ice spikes above its head and a blue tornado around it. They'll be surrounded by a few other pretty easy to kill enemies here, so it should be pretty easy to farm. And after you kill it, do a 180 and head back to the Vestige to rest and respawn them until you get the Umbral spell. Let's check out how it works. The second Umbral spell is called Hibernal Cleave, and to get it, you can start again at the Vestige of Svornil. Except this time, run past the Griefbound enemy we were just farming for. Just past them is the Kinronger, I think, Guardian, the big enemy with the axe. You can choose to farm him this way by just running past the previous enemies, or you can head a little bit further past him and use this ladder to get access to one of the flower beds. Placing a Vestige Seedling here, you can choose to go left where the wolves are and kill the Guardian there, or my preferred method, which is to just jump off the cliff and kill the guardian patrolling down below. Once you kill him, you can just turn around to climb back up the ladder and rest. When you get the spell, here's how it's gonna look in action. That's the six new spells, now we move on to the three new throwables. We're gonna start with the Bursting Grub throwable. Thankfully, we don't have to go far from the last place we were just farming, so if you're following along with this guide in order, lucky you, you can start again at the Vestige of Svornil. From here, head back towards the Windmill area where you first open the doors to the Thief of the Chill Curse. And in Umbral, you'll find the Mendacious Visage enemy, or as I like to call him, Mr. Potato Head. First take care of the wolf before going into Umbral, and then soul flay the enemy to open up his shell to kill him easier. When you get here, you might notice a flower bed a few feet away from where this guy spawns, but don't place a seedling here. Placing a vestige seedling at this spot makes Mr. Potato Head despawn until you move your seedling. Yeah, found that one out the hard way. But hey, at least I get to warn you guys, right? So just stick to farming him from the Vestige of Svornil and you'll be fine. Also, when you're farming him, since he drops so much loot, it's possible that you'll pick up the Bursting Grub without even realizing it, so it's a good idea to periodically check your throwables inventory just to see if you've already gotten it. If you're feeling brave and want to optimize your farming a little, you can visit the Vestige of Lydia the Numb Witch and follow the path that I take to get to an area that contains a flower bed and all three of the Mendacious Visage, Ruiner, and Seared Soul enemies.
In this area you can farm all three of them at once, but it's a lot more hectic and a lot easier to die. Here's what the bursting grub looks like when you use it. Next, let's make another visit to the Vestige of Rosamund so we can get the flower bed and farm the Abess enemy for the Embrewing Chalice Throwable. For now, just follow the path that I'm taking. Once you place a seedling here, you're looking for this enemy, the one that holds the chalice and shoots that golden laser beam at you. You passed her on your way here and probably even killed her, but when you respawn at this seedling, she'll be around the corner to the left on a balcony, but will quickly teleport further down the pathway, next to a sin piercer enemy. You could use this route to knock out two birds with one stone if you're still missing the sin piercer spell. The abess does take a while to die, so keep your eyes peeled for that drop, and once you get it, this is what it's going to look like when thrown. And lastly, we have the Explosive Snare Throwable. This one comes from the Trapper enemy found right outside the Shrine of a Deer, otherwise known as the Vestige of the Betrayed Iliard. You're looking for the guy with the really annoying explosive crossbow, the kind of snake looking enemy. This is a super easy spot to farm him since you can get to him before aggroing any other enemies, and then just do a 180 and get back to the Vestige. Let's take a look at his throwable in action. Thanks for watching everyone, if you found this video helpful go ahead and drop a like, the algorithm loves it, it's like a little snack for it, and it helps this video do significantly better. Subscribe if you want to see more Lords of the Fallen content, and with that, I'll see you guys later.